Y'all ready to call? Okay. Blessings, my blessing, my dear friends, in the beautiful and bountiful name of Jesus Christ. We have come on this first Sunday in the month of July to celebrate and to acknowledge that our God is still in control. We thank him for early morning awakening. We thank him for watch care all night, all night last night. We thank him for the provisions and the protection and the power that he has granted unto us and also the awesome privilege to call him our father for us to be his children. My brothers and sisters, today is the day that the Lord has made. We are to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm excited about today because I learned something uh, in this preparation of this sermon and, and I, I can't wait to share it with you, but we are gonna hear a musical selection from our music ministry and then we'll come back and hear what the Spirit has to say to the church on today. Come on and bless the Lord with me. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, sing. Come on and clap your hands with me. Come on and clap your hands with me. Come on and clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Sing Come on and dance before the Lord. Come on and dance before the Lord. Come on and dance before the Lord. We're singing hallelujah. 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 the Lord, you are to bless the Lord with us. Amen, amen. My brothers and sisters, again, I'm excited about this message today. It's something, Stephen, that I have, uh, I ain't going to say overlooked, but not paid that much attention to until now. And uh, it really stood out to me and spoke to me in such a way. Uh, pray with me now. Our Father and our God, we come. 
We come to your throne of mercy. We come with bowed down heads and closed eyes. We come humbled and grateful and thankful that you are our God. We ask now, Lord, that you allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, for you are my strength and my redeemer. Say a word to us on today, Lord, that we may hear your voice, we may feel your presence, and experience your power. Speak now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Our scripture this morning is coming from the book of Hebrews, the second chapter, verses 1 through 9 from the New Living Translation. And it reads like this. It says, So we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard, or we may drift away from it. For the message God delivered through angels has always stood firm, and every violation of the law and every act of disobedience was punished. So what makes us think we can escape if we ignore this great salvation that was first announced by the Lord Jesus himself and then delivered to us by those who heard him speak? And furthermore, it is not angels who will control the future world we are talking about. For in one place, the scripture says, What are people that you should think of them, or a son of man that you should care for him? Yet you made them only a little lower than angels, and crowned them with glory and honor. You gave them authority over all things. Now when it says all things, it means nothing is left out. But we have not yet seen all things put under their authority. What we do see is Jesus, who, has, who was given a position a little lower than the angels. And because he suffered death for us, he is now crowned with glory and honor. Yes, by God's grace, Jesus tasted death for everyone. And the church said amen and amen. Yeah, Chris, the more I looked at this and I pondered it and I had to sit back and say, Lord, you, you're trying to say something to me and please give me some clarity because I think I understand it, but I just need to be sure. And I said, he, you know, when you ask God in sincerity, when you ask him seeking his uh, approval and acknowledgement, when you are for real with yourself and with God, God will answer you. See, I kept looking at this thing uh, uh, that, that, that these things that are often spoke about in our Bible. And you know, a lot of times we as humans, we consider things as only being material. I discovered that in our Bible, the things that are talked about are more spiritual, more heavenly minded and heavenly bound than material. And I mean, I looked all the way back. Steve, I went to the beginning. And from Genesis to Revelation, things are mentioned over 900 and some times. It talks about things. In Genesis 7 and 4, it says, For after seven more days, I will cause it to rain on the earth 40 days and 40 nights, and I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made. I mean, I, mean, I, I kind of looked at that. I'm like, Lord, are you calling me a thing? I mean, please, I need you to be clear with me because if that's what I am, then that's what I want to be. Genesis 7, 23 says, so, and you know, this, he was dealing with Noah, but he says, so he destroyed all living things which were on the face of the ground, both man and cattle, 
creeping thing and bird of the air. They were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remained alive. So I guess he answered my question. I'm a thing too. Might not be the kind of thing or thing that most people want to call me. But in the eyes of God, I am a living thing. Then it comes down to Genesis 9 and 3. He says, every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. I have given you all things, even as the green herbs. I, I, I really started to get happy then because, you know, uh, a, a lot of times y'all tell me what I shouldn't eat. You tell me what's good for me and what ain't good for me. But the Bible says, God says, that every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. I say, thank you, Lord. You sure don't know how to provide. Because I like eating me some beef and some pork. I even, eat, 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 even will eat a little rabbit and deer every now and then. I like those things. So I said again, thank you, Lord, for the things. And, and, and again, all throughout the Old Testament, in both Psalms, Proverbs, everywhere in there, it talks about things. But Stephen, I had to go a little deeper. Because in our text today, it says we have been given authority over all things. And all still means all. As a matter of fact, our scripture says that now when it says all things, it means nothing is left out. So I say, Lord, you need to help me right here because I know I can talk about the Old Testament, but we are New Testament church. And what happens in the New Testament church, that's what our people today wants to recall. They don't want to read that old stuff. They want the new stuff. So I looked in Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. It says, but while he thought about these things, Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Did y'all hear me? He said about these things, because Joseph was com uh, concerned about how and what people were going to say. Again, so this gets me in a whole other category. It's spiritual, it's mental, and it's material. But he said, don't worry about what they're going to say. Because this conception was immaculate. This, is a, this conception was performed by the very living spirit of a living God. I dropped down, Stanley, and I read Matthew 4, 9. And it says, and he said to him... All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Y'all know who that was, right? That was Satan. Right after Jesus had come up out of the water and the spirit fell on him like a dove and the voice from heaven said, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He stepped out of the water and stepped into the wilderness guided by the angels and set free or uh, uh, turned loose and Satan was there to meet him. And he said, All you have to do is, is, is bow down and worship me and all these things will be given unto you. you remember what Jesus said, don't you? He said, man, you need to get back and get away from me. I don't know what you're talking about, but, 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 but I believe every word that comes from my father's mouth. I dropped down Matthew 6 and 8. I'm, I don't know y'all might be uh, discouraged today, but I got a whole lot of Bible to give you. Because this is where the truth lies. Regardless of what man says, if it's not according to the Bible, it's a lie. Matthew 6, 8 says, therefore do not be like them. You know, the pretenders and perpetrators, those Pharisees that was on the, he said, for your father knows the things you have need for before you ask. Right, right. That helped me to say that, okay, I know it's spiritual, but there's some material there too. There's some things there that I need to survive, like clothes on my back, 
food on my table, roof over my head. And it says that your father knows the things you have need for before you even ask. That set my soul afire right there. I'm saying, thank you, Lord. Because, you know, the one scripture that we always uh, 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 quote or misquote or uh, uh, just constantly repeat is a good one. But I hope we got the right understanding of it. Because Joshua in Matthew 6, 33, it says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things things shall be added to you. Right. Now, Steve, I know that there's such a thing as the Trinity. It may not be spelled out in my Bible, but I know there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So whenever I see things grouped in threes, I feel like it's coming from God that is a part of the Trinity. If you look at this one verse, it said, first you must uh, 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 seek ye first the kingdom of God, second and his righteousness, and the third and these things shall be added to you. So in other words, I ain't got a trip. I ain't got to worry about what I'm going to eat or what I'm going to wear. I ain't got to worry about the, uh, 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 is the roof going to stay over my head or, can, or will I have a car to go here and there from. I ain't got to worry about all that. If I first seek the kingdom of God and second, his righteousness and then third, all those things shall be added to me. I'm not, look, look, I'm, getting a, I'm trying to keep this thing metal because I want to go through it all. But I am excited to find out of these things. Matthew 7 and 11 says, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? I really said back then, Carl, because I said, I know what I've done for my children. I know what I do for my grandchildren. And if I'm able or willing to do that for my children, then I know my God is greater than me. And I call myself a child of the king. What greater gifts can he give? Minds have not uh, recollect what he could give. And the scripture says, eyes have not seen nor ears heard the things that God has for his children. My brothers and sisters, I get excited about this because even in Matthew eleven twenty four, 24, it says, all things have been delivered to me by my father. Hold up, wait a minute, this is Jesus talking. So we don't move from just the things to now all things. All things, Jesus said, all things have been delivered to me by my father and no one knows the son except the father nor does anyone know the father except the son and the one to whom the son wills to reveal him I'm so glad today that Jesus was not selfish to keep the father to himself he revealed him to us all to his disciples first and to all them that come after them. We have seen the Father because we have seen Jesus. Can I get a witness here? John 1, 2 and 4 in the New King James Version it says he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. All things were made through him and without him nothing was made. Jesus Christ is the one that is in charge of all things. And all still means all. That, nothing is left out. Now, I'm going to get to the shouting part in a minute, but right now I want to park by Jesus Christ because he is our deliverer, he's our redeemer, he's our sanctification and our salvation. It all starts and ends with Jesus. My brother and sister John 335 said the father loves the son and has given all things into his hand. Not just some things. You know how we like to do. We'll put some things in Jesus' hand. We'll pray to God about some things. 
But, all, but, but as far as all things, there's some things we can take care of ourselves. Y'all know how we do. Come on now. Some things we can take care of ourselves. We ain't going to bother God with that. Like it said, the father loves the son and has given him all things in his hand. John 4, 25, you remember the woman that was caught up? And it says, the woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us some things. He will tell us a few things. No, she said he will tell us all things. All things. Then when I drop down to John 4, 24, this is the response the woman had. She said, hey, y'all, men, women, all y'all, come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? I can hear Jesus saying now, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. This is from the spirit of the living God. She went out and told people, didn't keep it to herself. No, she had been caught up. No, she was still caught. Jesus made it so real to her. She said, I got to go and tell somebody. The man that told me everything, all things that I had ever done. Y'all need to come see a man. Because, you know, uh, uh, as well as you try to hide it from the pastor and the deacons and the mothers, you can't hide it from God. You know, you might as well be real and open with him because he already knows. And, and, and when he desires, he'll bring back to your remembrance everything that you have done. He'll tell you about yourself. I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of my old self. I'm glad my old self is gone, Chris. I'm, I'm glad it's behind me. Because, see, this is what I believe from Romans 8, 28. It says, and we know. And I know, I hope we know, I hope you know. But the scripture says, and we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. All things, good, bad, and ugly, all things work together for the good. They didn't come to hurt you. God, why you let me go through this? God, why you let so much uh, 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 come upon me? Lord God, why? All things work together for the good. For them that love God and are called according to his purpose. And see, uh, 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 this backs it up, Chris. It says, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. See, we love him because he first loved us. And we find out that even when all these things that happen to us, that they come to, uh, uh, that we are more than conquerors over them. We're not just conquerors. We are more than conquerors. See, we have the blessed ability and privilege to stand on the other side of these things and shout about a God that carried us through. Well, we have the blessed privilege to be able in the midst of the darkness and the storm to shout to somebody with our head held high and our voice speaking loud and say, thank you, Lord, I'm going through. I don't care what the rest of the world decides to do, I'm going through. I wish I could really preach this like I feel it this morning. 1 Corinthians 2 and 10 said, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. I had to sit back then. So all things is translated to the deep things of God. And I know my God is a deep God. My God stretches wide and he goes deep and he is as high than anyone could ever see. My God is an awesome God. So all these things that the Holy Spirit searches is the deep things of God. God is in connection with himself. I wish I could make this plainer than that, but that's, that's as plain as God is in connection with himself. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is in connection. They are three in one and one in three. 
There's no getting past the Trinity. 1 Corinthians 2 and 5 came and told me, but he who is spiritually, he who is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. No one can judge God, Jesus or the Holy Spirit. They're one in three, but he judges all things. Nothing is left out. I know how we normally would say about how, you know, it wasn't that big of a lie. Just a small lie. We even have the nerve, uh, 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 OT, to color it and say it was a little white lie. So in other words, white lies are smaller than black lies. See, 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 somebody going to get that in just a moment. See, we are here shouting about how black lives matter, but telling white lies. Oh, Lord, help me right here today. That's for another day. That's for another day. 1 Corinthians 3.21 says, Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours. Now we get into our part. Because remember what our text says. It, it says, you, you gave them authority over all things. He's talking about us. When he made Adam and Eve. And told Adam to name everything. And everything was under his control. And we are the children of Adam and Eve. Can I get a witness here? Yes, and my brother and sister, you know what I had to look at? 1 Corinthians 6, 12. He said, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful to me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Now, that's Jesus talking. Because, see, you know, we weak. And though we know all things are lawful and are good, we are still, we are still subjected to those things and we will shy away from them even though we know they may be helpful to us because we want to do it ourselves we want to be able to be in charge of something Jesus said all these things that are going on that I'm telling y'all about that you have authority over I am not subject to not one of them now that's Jesus I'm going to get plain here in just a moment. Y'all, just stay with me. Our text says, uh, 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 you gave them authority over all things. Now when it says all things, it means nothing is left out. But we have not yet seen all things put under their authority. What we do see is Jesus, who for a little while was given a position a little lower than the angels, and because he suffered death for us, he is now crowned with glory and honor. Yes, by God's grace, Jesus tasted death for everyone. See, the reason why we have not uh, uh, seen all things because we ain't died yet. But Jesus has died and has rose from the grave and all things are under his control. Now, the things that are under our control, we must do as he tells us to do, but we are not witnessing all things yet. We will witness all things when we stand before him in that heavenly place where the streets are paved with gold and the walls are full of jasper when we end up in that heavenly place where there's no more sickness there's no more death there's no more crying there's no more backbiting there's no more backstabbing there's no more anger no more malice no more strife there's no more jealousy when we get to that point then we have experienced all things my brothers and sisters, 1 Corinthians 8 and 6 said, Yet for us there is one God, the Father of whom are all things. And we for him and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things, uh, through him whom we live. All things are rooted and grounded and founded in the Trinity of God. See, see, see you know, the more I read my Bible, the less I start to listen to what man say. I wish y'all hear me now. Now see, see, I am a student 
of the word of God. And I want to hear and understand with clarity the information of the Bible, of God's word. So I will hear what man is saying as long as it's according to the Bible. But I listen to God. There's a difference from hearing and listening. Somebody going to get me here soon. Somebody going to get me here soon. My brothers and sisters, this is what Paul says, and this is what helps me out. As a matter of fact, this is what I did my first sermon on. It's 1 first, first Corinthians 9 and verse 22. I'm not going to read all, of it, uh, uh, all the other ones that lead up to it, but Paul says, To the weak, I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men that I might by all means save one. Now I say, Paul, thank you. Thank you for telling me that. So I must become all things for all men. That means I don't have the luxury to, dis to, to decide who I'm going to witness to, who is deserving of salvation, who is deserving to hear that this reality of serving a true and living God? This goes for all men, even those that might despitefully use or mistreat or abuse us. We must still testify of the goodness of God. Now, here it is, because y'all know our God is love, and we must love. I tried to help somebody not too long ago sharing what agape love is. It's unconditional love. So Steve, I had to go here to 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, where it says love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked. Here it is now. It thinks no evil, does, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. And it endures all things. That's love. That means love cannot be diminished. Love cannot be taken for granted. Love ought not be just thrown around and bossed, uh, bounced off the walls haphazardly. Love is special. Love is God and God is love. Love is important to our being. I'm about to close it now. But we must remember the things of God. The inspired word of God. I know some say men wrote it. That didn't come from God. Every man came from God. As a matter of fact, everything he made, he said it was good. But we make it evil and dirty. 1 Corinthians 14 and 40 says, Let all things be done decently and in order. Now, I know some of y'all thought that there was just something that the church made up. You didn't believe that was in your Bible. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 14 and 40, let all things be done decently and in order. There is an order in God's church. There is an order in God's uh, uh, statute. There is an order. And it must be done, things must be done decently and in order. I want to get deeper in it, but I'm going to save that for a Bible study. 1 Corinthians 15, 28 says, Now when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subject to him, who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. All means all. Nothing is left out. God is in everything. God allows things to happen and it's for our good. All still means all. My brothers and sisters, Mark 9, 23 says, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. I believe. Steve, I still believe. Done gone through some sleepless nights. Done gone through some storms, 
but I still believe. Done had some ups and downs, ins and outs. People done talked about me and stabbed me in the back. But Stanley, I still believe. I believe that all things are possible to him who believes. I still believe. Mark 10, 27 said, but Jesus looked at them and said, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Are y'all hearing me? All things are possible with God. All things. Mark 13, 23 says, but take heed. See, I have told you all things beforehand. You mean to tell me, Jesus, you've already told us that we were going to suffer in this world? That we were going to have trial and tribulation in this world? That every day was not going to be like a bowl of peaches and cream? That the rain was going to fall on the just and the unjust? That we're going to have to go through some sleepless nights and some terrible storms? You mean you told us all that beforehand and then left us the Bible that repeats it every time we pick up and read it? That all these things will happen but then you you said be of good cheer because you have overcome these things I thank you Lord I wish we would start listening to you more I wish we would pay more attention to your word like what you said over in John chapter 1 2 and 5 that, that, that we may understand or, or get a better understanding that he was in the beginning with God all things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shines in darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it everything was made by you for you and through you thank you Jesus cause see some of us want to try to confuse it and try to make it be like uh, 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 there's somebody else in control but I know Buddha didn't die and rise Muhammad didn't die and rise only Jesus did John over in John Jesus said but the helper because I know you're going to have trouble trying to understand this. He said, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring them to your remembrance, all things that I have said to you. Thank you, Jesus. Because, you know, when that load gets heavy and I can't see my way through it, then my eyes are taken off of you. But thank you, Spirit of the living God bringing back to my remembrance all things, all things that Jesus has taught us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Spirit of God, for dwelling in me and walking with me and talking with me and continually telling me that I am your very own. Thank you, Lord, for all these things. John says, look, Y'all need to know this. Jesus said in John 15 and 15, that this is what you need to know, that I have graduated you. It says, no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I, that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. The Acts of the Apostles in chapter 22 and 10 said, So I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, Arise and go to Damascus, Paul, and there will be told, and there you will be told all things which are appointed for you. You mean, Lord, if I walk for you, if I live for you, then everything that has been appointed to me, all things that have been appointed to me, I will understand, yes. That's what the Bible says. Because we are more than conquerors, we can go through anything. My brothers and sisters, Romans eleven thirty six 36 says, For of him and through him and to him all are all things, to whom be glory forever. Did y'all catch that? For of him and through him and to him all things to whom be glory forever. Therefore, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, Old things have passed away. Behold, 
All things have become new. Did y'all get that? Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5.18 says, Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. My brothers and sisters, I'm about done. I'm almost there. It says in 2 Corinthians 6, 3 through 5, New Living Translation, it says, We live in such a way that no one will stumble because of us, and no one will find fault with our ministry in everything, or in the King, King James, all things we do. We show that we are true ministers of God. We patiently endure troubles and hardships and calamities of every kind. We have been beaten, been put in prison, face angry mobs, worked to exhaustion, endured sleepless nights, and gone without food. It's in your Bible. If you haven't colored over it, scratched it out, or tore it out, it's there. We must endure some things and go through some things. If Jesus had to do it, why not us? Well, Ephesians 5 and 20 says, Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Philippians 2.14, Do all things without complaining and disputing. Now I really wish I would highlight that one in your Bible. Do all things without complaining and disputing. If God put it out there for you to do it, just do it. There will be a reward. He, diligent, he's, mm, Lord, our God rewards those that diligently seek him. He is a rewarder. Do all things without complaining. Colossians 1.16, For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or power. All things were created through him and for him. Colossians 1.17, And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. 1 Thessalonians 5.21, Test all things, hold fast to what is good. Did y'all hear that? Should I say it again? Test all things, hold fast to what is good. 2 Timothy 4 and 5, but you be watchful in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. I'm done. It's about all things. All things are under his control and his authority. And guess what? All things are also under yours. You don't have to do what you're not supposed to do. You do it because you want to do it. You can control your thought. You can control your action. The devil can't make you do nothing. Jesus had put him in his place. We are no longer under sin's penalty or providence. We are now under the grace of God. That's why, that's why I shout when I say, uh, 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 if anyone... And that includes me. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Y'all keep telling me ain't no good in me. But you know what? I've been changed. And it says that he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And my brothers and sisters, I know right now for myself, nobody has to tell me I ain't got to go through another storm. I ain't got to bust my head on another wall or bust my butt on another ground to know that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I don't need nobody to come and tell me. I don't need my mama to tell me or no Nobody else. I know I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I have the power over all things and the authority over all things. None of those things do have authority over me. The only thing that I know that I show sure enough know that Jesus is mine. Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus is my creator and my redeemer. He's my sustainer. I love him because he first loved me and I know that I'm more than a conqueror over all those things I know that if I seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness
business, then all these things shall be added to me. I shall want for nothing. I shall be fed when I'm hungry, clothed when I'm naked. I shall have a roof over my head when I am, when I need. He will supply all things. My God will supply everything that I stand in need of. That's why I love him. That's why I press my way through because I know my God is with me and that he is the one that controls and have complete authority over all things. Father, we thank you today that all things are under your authority and all means everything is not left out. Thank you right now for the healing. Thank you for reconciliation. Thank you, Lord, for lifting us up, pulling us up, and then cleaning us up, and then sending us out to be your representatives of all things. We thank you right now. Continue to bless your word and bless your people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. We're going to have a song, then we're going to come back and we're going to share at the Lord's table. Bless us now. Give yourself to Jesus. You don't have much time Give yourself to the master He'll make your life sublime give yourself to Jesus he's waiting just for you Just put all your trust in Him. God will take care of you. God. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. God will take care. My brothers and sisters, God will take care of you. He will take care of you. If you just submit yourself to him, he will take he has complete and total authority over everything. If we just give ourselves to him. My brothers and sisters, we're going to come now to the Lord's table, but I want to share something with you from the book of Luke the 22nd chapter and I want to start at verse 14 
because we don't just do this out of tradition we don't come to the Lord's table just because mama and them used to do it and we couldn't wait until we could in Luke 22 verse 14 it says when the hour had come he sat down and the twelve apostles with him then he said to them with fervent desires I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer for I say to you I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God then he took the cup and gave thanks and said take this and divide it amongst yourselves for I say to you I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God has come and he took bread he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me likewise he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you but behold the hand of my betrayer is with me me at the table my brothers and sisters we must always remember this is the ordinance that Jesus Christ has set before us and he acts that as often as we do this to do it in remembrance of him So we come now to that time that we shall share in the Lord's Supper. That we shall share of both his body and his blood. We don't do it as cannibals. We don't do it as vampires. We do this in remembrance of him. For our God says as often as you do it, do this in remembrance of me. And every time I think about what Christ endured for us, the suffering, the betrayal, the persecution, the beating, the scourging, everything that he endured for us. Every time I think about his beaten body and his shed blood, I am brought to remembrance that if I suffer with him I shall also reign with him so now we take this his body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ let us eat it together and then we raise our cup the cup of praise the cup of hallelujah the cup of blood that was shed for the remission of sins for many let us drink together and let us say in the name of the Father the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit and then we said amen and amen Steve I just need to hear I haven't heard it in a minute but I know it was the blood I know. I know it was the blood. All right. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. But they went out of the They died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Oh, the blood came streaming down. The blood came streaming down. The blood came streaming down for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood 
for me Oh, they lay him in the tomb Lay him in the tomb They lay him in the tomb for me One day when I was lost He died upon the cross I know it was He's coming back again He's coming back again oh, He's coming back again He's coming back again He's coming back again For me One day when I was lost He died upon the cross And I know it was a good for me Amen, amen. I know it was the blood just for me. I know it was the blood. My brothers and sisters, let us continue to be in prayer. Uh, PMBC members, you all know the ones that are on the prayer list. Let us add Sister Renee Board and Deacon James Franklin to that list as well. We thank God that both of them are doing well now after what they've gone through this past weekend. We know that our God is still in control. He sees all, knows all, and can do anything but fail. We thank God for your presence on today. Thank you all for joining us. And until we meet again, may God be with you. May he be with you until we meet again. God, God be with you. May God be with you. God be with you. God be with you. Until we meet again. Oh, God. God be with you. God. And now may God be with you when you rise up early and when you settle late. You're going out and you're coming in, in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears. Until that great day, when all things will come be known to us. Until that great day, when we stand around, sit around the feet of Jesus. Until that great day, may he be with you henceforth now and even until forevermore. And let all of the believers of God all of the redeemed of God, all of the sustained of God, let us all say together, Amen, Amen, and Amen. May God keep you and bless you is our prayer.